hey guys, in today's video we're going to learn how to make this Lego Ninjago cake. So for the first tier I've got a 5 inch cake and I have just covered this in some yellow fondant. Now I've pre-made the yellow myself using uh, melon sugar flare. I'm doing, I've sped this up quite quickly just to shorten down the video. I have got um, a separate tutorial that shows how to ganache and cover a cake. You're basically looking to uh, cover the top tier in yellow. We want to keep the edges at the top quite rounded, um, just like it would be for a, a Lego head. Still doing the same as before where we're smoothing out the top and smoothing out the sides, but we're not going to apply the sharp edges that we usually do to um, cakes. We need to keep them quite rounded. So we're going to leave this to dry on uh, just its own cake board ready for uh, transferring onto the next layer. Now I do apologise that in this video there is a slight section that is missing um, and that is again just stacking a cake but I will uh, post a link in the comments to a separate video that includes how to stack. So once you've rounded off the edges we're going to put that one to one side and we're just going to work on the um, lid and the eyes. So just using one of the cookie cutters, I've just cut out a rounded uh, circle for the top. And then I've got some black fondant and I've just cut out some small eyes, uh, just in black. And then I'm going to hand cut the eyebrows for these. Now, they can be quite difficult and they can be quite tricky and I realise that the light in the video is not the best. Um, so what I have done in the link in the description box below is I've posted a link uh, to where you can actually get the templates out. Uh, so for the templates you would cut them out, put them on top of your icing and then just cut round them. It just makes it a little bit easier than trying to do it freehand. Um, you're trying to cut sort of like a, a large tick um, for the eyes and trying to get them the same is quite difficult. So you can see that I've just sort of like uh, cut out a large tick shape that comes to a point at one side and a point at the other side. We're going to trim off the section underneath so it's flat, just so that the eye sticks onto there nicely. And we're going to do the same for the other side. Now once you've done this, we're then going to stick it to the cake, just using a little bit of water. Um, you can use edible glue if you prefer, it's just that I like to work with water. So you can see I'm just straightening off the edge there and then just sticking the eye to it. Now when I did these and I put them on I, I did uh, feel like they were too big and so I trimmed them down when they were actually on there. This is the section for the mouth so it's just a long thin sausage that comes down at an angle at one side. I'm just smoothing that out. Again, that was too big and I trimmed it down as well. So we've just got a little bit of water. And we're going to stick the eyes on first. And then we're going to do the eyebrows. So when you're putting the eyes on, you don't want to lose any of the shape that you push in. So you don't want to push too firm. It just needs to stick on. And don't use too much water because it will drip off. So you can see that the eyebrow that I've got here is quite long. And so we're going to just trim off a little bit of that. And I'm just going to cut on an angle, holding it in place while I cut because we don't want to drag it off. I think all in all there were probably about two inches in length. Um, so again I will put the, um, the template down below. So you can just see that I'm just neatening it up just with a damp brush and we're going to just trim the other eyebrow so that we don't have to do that once that's on the face. Again just trimming it off at an angle, just a tiny little bit of water to stick that on. And you want to make sure that the flick comes up towards the middle of the brow. Um, they kind of want to be at a similar angle. Now you can go in, because we've let this dry a little bit, you can go in and chop that with a knife and it won't affect the fondant that's already under there. 
your eyebrows want to trail down a little bit at the side as well and if you move it and you end up with a bit of a black splodge you can just use a little bit of water um, damp your brush take off any excess and then just uh, if you do sort of like circular motions up it will take off any black staining that's there so you can see I'm just neatening up that line there next we're going to stick on the mouth so again just a little bit of water just in a straight line so you can see I can see it's a little bit too long so I'm going to take it off just trim off the end and just re-point um, the end again because you don't want it to be flat it needs to come to a point and I'm just taking some of the chunk out on the bit that comes down and we're just going to stick that on with a little bit of water Try to keep it as straight as possible, just like it is in the program. So you should have something that's like this so far. So next we're going to take some small white blobs and we're just going to place these in the centre of the eye at the top. Again, they both need to be in the same position as each other. You could change the face on this if you wanted to just make it as a Lego head. You can change the expression. Uh, use different eyebrows. I'm just taking out a little chip at the top. Can't really see it properly on this one, but you can see it on the final picture. We'll pop that to one side to dry, and I've got another cake here that I've covered in red. And again, I'm just taking some of the yellow out, and we're just going to make a little face. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything too big because we are going to hide this with the uh, headwear of this particular character. Wears. I can't remember the name but I will put that again in the description box below so it doesn't have to be too neat at the top it needs to be a little bit rounded at the sides and again we're just going to do exactly the same as what we did on the other one so we're just going to stick the eyes on and stick the eyebrows we don't have to put a mouth on this one because um, you can't see it anyway so same process as before we need the eyes which I've just taken out with a little uh, circle cutter and then I've just pushed them in at the side to make them more oval and then we're going to do the same with the eyebrows that we did before so we're going to cut out use going for the top line first and you want to go up and then curve it back down a little bit and then just follow exactly the same underneath Again, I'll put the uh, link in the box below for these. So once you've got both of those, we're going to stick on the yellow bit for the face and just make sure that the corners are stuck down well. Again, it doesn't matter if it's not completely straight because we'll be covering the tops and the bottoms up anyway. And then we're going to stick on the eyes. Try and uh, stay as central as what you can. So just popping on the eyes first. Again, don't press down too hard because you don't want to lose that shape that we've got. And then we're just going to put the eyebrows on. So same method as before, keeping that flick in the middle. So just pushing it on to make sure that it's stuck securely and just trimming off any excess if needed. Now you may use the templates and may still find that you need to trim off excess. It may change shape when you put it on or you may just feel like a little bit needs tweaking. Don't be scared to uh, use one of your scalpels to just trim off any excess that's needed until you're happy with the shape. Don't be worried about any staining that's going to happen from the black because again, like I said, if you just get a brush with a little bit of water and you can just rub that off so you don't actually see it anywhere. So with this one, there is some slight lines underneath the eyes. Um, you can barely see it because it's so small, but you're just going to roll a little sausage 
pointy at one side and flat at the other and we're just going to trim off um, two of those to go underneath each eye. Now you can roll these bits of fondant if you wanted to or you could probably draw it on with a bit of uh, sugar flare midnight black or licorice or something like that. I always prefer to stick fondant on where I can because you can move the fondant whereas if you was to draw it on with the pin you kind of stuck with that line unless you want to start taking it off and repainting it on it can just get a bit faffy whereas this you can stick it on and you can push it into place to where you want it to be. And we're just going to do this for both of the eyes. And then we're going to stick the whites in the eyes in. Again, same place as before, in the middle. So you can see it's beginning to look a lot more like a Lego character. Next we're going to cover the board. Um, so I've just got some green fondant. And this is part of the video that's missing. It wouldn't download for whatever reason. So what I've done is I've taken some fondant, rolled it out quite thinly, and I've cut my circle away. And this is going to go on the board around the front and towards the back. Now when it goes towards the back it doesn't cover the whole board um, but all I've done is I've done the same method again so I've just um, rolled out some fondant, trimmed a line to go around the back with a slight semicircle out of there and then I've put it on. To blend that line I've got some flexi smoothers and just a little bit of water and you put them on and just rub it out and you will get rid of that line. So I've cut the edge, you can see, just to flatten it off and then that's where the second bit of fondant is going to go. So once you've applied your second bit of fondant, you'll put your Lego head on top I've put five dowels in there just to support it in a bit of ganache. I've got some red fondant, I've rolled it out quite thin again and we're just going to concertina this to make the rest of the mask for the bottom. So I'm literally um, cutting it into strips and just taking off the edges and then we're just going to fold it. So I'm pushing over one side can see I'm just picking it up and pinching it together and then pushing in a line in the middle and that's just going to give a really nice natural sort of fabric -y fold and we're just going to wrap that around just sticking it together with a little bit of water. Now you want the back to be neat you don't want to just leave it hanging about and messy so we're going to tuck in those sides and glue those down making sure that the folds that are touching the face are glued down as well and then we're going to do the same with the other piece of fondant so we're going to you can see I'm just pushing it together and then putting my finger in just to create that natural fold if you find it easier you can put a straw on underneath so that it gives you that um, that fold so you just put the fondant over the straw and push it down. Can you see how it's it's given me that nice natural fold? And then we're just going to put some water on the cake and we're going to stick this on top of the next one that we've done. Remember to fold in your edges, just gives it a more natural and neater look as well. And we're just going to take the edges all the way around. And we're going to tuck those over one another. So you can go in there with a the modelling tool and just puff out those uh, pieces if you wanted to or lift it up and push it to where it needs to go. But you can see it's given it quite a nice effect at the front. And we're just going to do exactly the same for the top as well. So for the top, again, we're just going to wet that with a little bit of water. I'm going to use exactly the same method as before. So just being careful to fold down the top of the edge as well. 
and just smoothing it out just to make sure it's nice and smooth. So we're going to stick this one over the front. Again, you need to make sure it's coming down far enough that it covers that join of the yellow to the red at the top. And then at the back, you're just going to trim off any excess. So pushing it in place and just gluing it down with a little bit of water. And then pulling the next piece round and matching it up with where you've just taken it off. And just pushing those around each other. And then we're going to do the same again. Just to go now from what we've just put on to the next layer as well. So I've got another piece and you can see I'm just going to wrap that around exactly the same method as before. Just sticking it down with a little bit of water. Again, tidying up the back, trimming off any excess and tucking in any pieces. So next we're going to do the board. So I've just taken the smallest circle push cutter that I've got and I've just cut plenty of uh, green circles and we're just going to mark the whole board with this. Now it is a bit lengthy and um, it's quite difficult to keep them all in line. If you've got one of the stampers, I'll put a link in the description box for those, although I don't use them, but if you've got a stamper which puts in the little points, you could use that on the board if you wanted to. But I've covered the board after the cakes are on, just so obviously that the cakes, you know, you're not wasting the time doing that bit that the cakes are actually sat on. So you're just going to stick it on with a little bit of water. And just carry on going until the whole board is full. Trying to keep them in a nice straight line. And then once the board is dry overnight, you won't be able to see any of the, uh, the lines from the water. So when you've finished, you should have uh, something that looks like this. I hope you like this video. To see more of my tutorials, please click the links on the screen now. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future videos. Thanks for watching.